Hello, welcome to the Mad Batter channel. My name's Chris. If you find this video interesting and or useful, perhaps you'll consider giving it a like and possibly subscribing to the channel, which would be a great help. Many thanks. In my last video, I looked at the new clone tool in Luminar Neo and compared it to the clone stamp tool in Photoshop. Whilst the clone tool in Luminar Neo is perfectly adequate for removing blemishes and other minor items from a photograph. It is much less flexible than the one in Photoshop. In this video I would like to offer some tips and tricks on achieving more functionality with the clone stamp tool, enabling things such as blend modes, scaling, flipping, horizontal and vertically etc. And the message is, in a lot of cases, don't use the clone stamp tool at all. The trick in most cases where you want to achieve this additional functionality is to use separate layers combined with layer masking and layer properties rather than using the clone stamp tool at all. Of course, this technique is also available in Photoshop. But as the clone stamp tool is much more flexible and can, for instance, clone between layers and between documents, and you can directly use blend modes and then easily transform or warp the clone material, this method is not necessary. So let's say, for instance, we have this picture here of a runner coming down a hillside, and for some reason we wanted to add this runner here into the picture. So first of all, we'll take this and go into the edit function and then I've already added that other image into my layer layers available. So we'll double click that and add it to the image and increase the opacity to 100%. The next step is to mask the layer to hide everything except the runner. Now I could take, so we're going to layer masking, I could take a brush and try and brush in the runner, but it's always worth having a look at what mask AI comes up with first. This may do most of the masking for you. So here we are, it's identified six items, one of which is human. And there we are, it's done most of the work for us. However, it's not perfect and we need to just touch up the mask a bit so we'll zoom in to a hundred percent no probably two hundred percent paste space bar to move now the first thing is you can see his shoe looks totally unrealistic and we want it to disappear into the grass so now we need to grab a brush make it not too hard nearly a hundred but not quite make it a small brush and then start to mask away some of that hard edge will increase the softness and the strength maybe the size a little bit and still keep working on this so we've got a fuzzy edge so that looks like the shoe has disappeared into the grass, as it would, of course, in real life. We might also want to just do a little bit around the side of the shoe. There we are. Now the other thing is, of course, it's brought this bit of mountain. So now we need to reduce the hardness to 100%. And then we we'll probably need to zoom in a bit more. And then we're on arrays, so go around the edges and remove the bits that we don't want. Obviously you'll do a better job than me if this was an important So bits around the outside we should be getting rid of. 
some around his ear here. There's bits here. But you get the idea. Bit there. Uh, around the edge of his fingers. There's more here. I think that'll do for our current purposes. And there's a bit of another go at stuff here. Okay, so now we'll go back out to fit screen and then we'll go over to layer properties. Now, because the runner is, we can move the runner around, of course. And because he's getting closer to us, we really need to make him a bit bigger. Unlike in Photoshop, we haven't got vanishing points or guides to draw to show where the perspective is. So we'll have to just do it by eye. But that looks not unreasonable. I should just quickly add two further thoughts. The first is that this has been to demonstrate the principle of the technique. I'm aware the lighting doesn't match. As you'll see, the light is coming from the left in the picture and it's on his left shoulder, whereas on the runner we put in, it's coming from the right. So obviously, if this is going to be a pro proper project, you need to be a bit more careful in selection. The second thing to say is that once you've done the compositing, you can go in to any of the tools and adjust anything you want to to try and match it up with the um, main image and there we are we've effectively cloned the runner from the previous picture into this picture so there we are so that's one way of cloning an item from one image to another, moving it around and scaling it slightly. Sometimes you might want to clone within an image using both masking, opacity and blend modes. The clone tool has opacity in the form of strength, but it has no blend modes and no masking of its own. So again, the trick is to use a new, a different layer, but this time you use a duplicate layer. And to do that, you press the D key. So we have two la identical layers. So we're working on the upper one. So now we'll start our cloning. So we use 100% fairly soft brush. Size maybe a bit bigger. Right bracket key. Now we haven't got a great deal of uniform color, so we're going to have to keep sampling little and often. So I'm going to use this sort of area here. So click, and clone, or click and clone again without moving outside that area. Otherwise you'll pick up other colors and tones. So it's a bit of a pain, but. a bit smaller so getting round to the edge of the eye and then we also probably want to lighten this up here so I'll just go over that so we'll reduce the strength and the size again quite difficult. 
effect on this image to get a uniform anyway that's probably not too bad I think we need to make our brush a bit bigger if we're going to smooth this out maybe we should just dab there we are now first of all we, we want to make sure we're restricting the effect of this duplicate layer to the area that we've cloned so we need to mask it so I've got paint so make the brush bigger and oops to make the strength 100 percent smaller catch that and then reduce the strength around the bottom of the eye so you only get less of the effect there and then again we'll come around the edge with lesser effect there we are, that should do so now we're going to properties we'll change the blend mode to light it doesn't make a great deal of difference but now we reduce the opacity and you see we can adjust it to taste that's probably about where I would have it now there's a bit of a line here so if we go into masking take the arrays and a low opacity of brush we can go around the edge to blend this in a bit better there we are so I'm removing a little bit of the more of the effect down here so that's before and that's after so that's the trick if you want to clone within an image with maximum flexibility is to duplicate the layer and then mask out everything except the cloned area on that duplicate layer and then you can use the properties and blend modes to achieve the result you want we can use these techniques to improve or repair a picture like this one here we've got all this light bleeding onto the top lintel we've got all this stuff down the side so we're going to rely on a number of duplicate layers unfortunately as far as i can tell it's not possible in luminar neo unlike earlier versions to rename layers so you have to be quite disciplined to keep yourself organized so we'll press d to duplicate the layer and on this layer we're going to clone away some of this stuff we don't want this doorbell here for instance we can use these techniques to improve or repair a picture like this one here we've got all this light bleeding onto the top lintel we've got all this stuff down the side and i might for fun move this picture make it a bit smaller so we're going to rely on a number of duplicate layers unfortunately as far as i can tell it's not possible in luminar neo unlike earlier versions to rename layers so you have to be quite disciplined to keep yourself organized so we'll press d to duplicate the layer and on this layer we're going to clone away some of this stuff we don't want this doorbell here for instance so we don't want much softness So that's got rid of that down the edge now we're going to try and deal with this lintel so we go back to the original layer d for duplicate and move it on the top and now in order to deal with this we're going to try and take a bit of this and move it over there so i'm going to get masking brush paint and that's a very slightly bigger brush match the width of the uh, lintel move it down hold shift 
and there we are. So now we've selected that. So now we can go to properties and you see we've selected this bit of the lintel. So now we can move it into place. Like that. We need to make it slightly longer. So we need to get these parallel edges level with that and now we need to mask out the uh, ir these curved edges so we don't need any softness so click there that's that click there holding the shift key and so we have our new lintel now if we want we can go in and try and make it to match a bit better by upping the exposure and the shadows. So the next thing we need to do is to restore the uh, door number which is hiding beneath this new lintel so we'll hide that. Go back to the original layer D for duplicate and move it up the top. Now what to do is to select that. So first thing we'll do is zoom in to 100% spacebar okay now masking brush paint hard brush and select this doesn't need to be perfectly accurate important thing is not to stray outside the black area so I'll just erase that little bit there okay so now we've selected the number we'll go back to fit to screen we'll show that there but now we've got our number on top what we need to do now is to make that number look a bit more realistic so we'll highlight the layer with the number in it D to duplicate it and we'll set the uh, blend mode to multiply so that looks much more realistic so that's the end of the process if we go back to how the image looked originally all the nasty light flares on the top lintel and all the marks and the um, bell on the side wall and that's how it looks now all cleaned up wall and a much better looking lintel and number. So as you can see it is possible to overcome the limitations of the clone tool in trying to be creative by using layers which then gives you access to layer properties, blend modes and masking. Hopefully some of the techniques in this video will give you some ideas on how to be creative with your images. In the meantime, I hope you found all this useful and many thanks for watching.